Hello guys, I'm Orbiter and I'm your Welsh engineer. I will be showing you in this first tutorial of a series of tutorials from basics to advanced, from just flying your rocket to building the basic rocket to get into orbit up towards building a huge space station, building large rovers and taking them to plants afar, building bases which will please any Kerbal or even your NASA official which will hopefully get you a job at NASA. Probably won't do that but they, you never know. Anyway first thing before we start the game go into settings this is very important. Go to advanced tweakables and make sure that's switched on. I always have mine on. Let's accept that and let's go ahead and start the game. Okay, start new and I'm not gonna do a career mode. I'm not going to do a science mode. No, because you have to grind for money in career mode. You have to grind for science in science mode to get all the parts. No, we're going in sandbox mode. And the reason for that is you have all the parts. Your Kerbal Space Center will be all upgraded. You have all the features for all your Kerbals enabled. That means you you don't have to work for all that. And basically, this is how I learn. Jumping in the deep end. And why not? Because it's a lot more fun. It means you can engineer your craft to your heart's content. Anyway, I've called this Basics because that's what we're doing. Let's overwrite the save, which I messed up first off. And let's try again. <laughs> okay, you can read this message, but I've read it before. And here you have the vehicle assembly building. Let's quickly go over it. You have the launch runway, which you can click. You can launch uh, aircraft. Another good thing for using sandbox mode is that you have pre-built planes. You have pre-built rockets. And, well, yes, they're all built for you. They all fly at some point or other. Do be careful though, things like this satellite, you do need to build your own launcher for them, but they are cool to mess around with. You have things, other buildings there, you have three buildings here which you can't use in sandbox mode. Administration, obviously that's for money, mission control, that's where you normally get your missions, and research and development. And that is where you do your research, uh, get your parts for whatever you earn, science and money. But this this Kerbal Space Center is not just a man new. No, when you fly in a rocket, this actually becomes a model. You can do things like fly a jet underneath this, which I've never done, by the way. I'm terrible at jets and space planes. But you can do so many things around here. And that's before you get into space. Anyway, let's do this first tutorial on flying. Now, I said we have rockets available. Oh yes, I almost forgot these three buildings. Space plane hangar, where you'll build your space planes. Vehicle assembly building, that's normally where you build your rockets. And you also have your tracking station. Let's quickly go into that one. Because this is an interesting one. There's Kerbin. Oh, the lovely planet. It does need some clouds, and there is a mod out there you can add clouds to it. But if I zoom out, you have the man. Let's click on him. You can zoom in. And then you have Minmus. I won't click on Minmus just in case you haven't gone there and you want to explore it for yourself. If we zoom out, you have all the planets in the Kerbin system. From the giant gas giant Jewel to the distant Elu, which is like Pluto. But we do have question marks here. What the hell are they? Well, they are asteroids and they don't appear in your game until you start tracking them. Now, I've started tracking that. And normally the asteroids will come in a close approach to Kerbin. You can see up there, let's click, click on Kerbin. And it should show us, yeah, it's going to pass Kerbin in between the orbit of Minmus and the Man. So yeah, you could go and build a mission and capture an asteroid and even do what I have done in the past, build an asteroid base. Anyway, that's the tracking station. It's a cool place to visit. You can use it to track all your spacecraft. Well then, I think what we need to do now is launch a rocket before we all get bored. But we do need something that we can track with the tracking station. So let's go to the launch pad, click on it, and let's look for something we can use. I think what we'll use is one of the landers. Now which one? Two-stage lander. Uh, let's use the super heavy lander. But uh, let's do some modifications to it. So let's go into the vehicle assembly building. This might be your first time, but it's a good way to start off. Just tip your toes into the building of a spacecraft. 
Okay, we're not gonna do all a lot of modification, just some simple things. I think we need to change the engines first because they're not rated for the atmosphere that we're in at the moment. So click on one of them. It'll take all of them away because they're put on the ship in symmetry mode. Don't worry, I'll explain that more in future tutorials. Now what you want to do is go to the tabs on the left and click on engines and look for the LVT45 engines. Nice long engine like this one. And ooh, before we place it, if we bring it up and you'll see the two nodes snatched together, you see you only get one engine. And the way to overcome that is click on this symmetry tool by here till you get four pie charts on there. Now click on the LVT45 engine, now snap it back into place, then you get the four engines. That's good because at least you won't be going flying sideways this time. All right, just in case we mess up with our flight, we want to save our Kerbal, but we can't do it with this docking port on there. Yeah, that's a docking port that we'll be using in the future. All right, click on that. Click on the part side here. If you click any part on the side by here, it'll delete the part. And then what we want to do now is go to Utility and look for the M Mark 16 XL Parachute. Now plonk him on top of this, again snap it in place. Okay, that's nice, but this whole rocket is too heavy for that one parachute. So we need a decoupler so we can get rid of all this rocket. Okay, one thing that I have to mention, so we clicked on the rocket to take the rockets off. But what happens if we click on a part which is under the command part, which is the main part, if I click on that, you can move it about. Or if I click on something under it, it'll take the entire rocket away from it. That's what we want to do, by the way, so do that. Let's go to coupling tab here. Now, you in here, you get uh, like advanced grabbing unit, docking ports, radial decouplers, which we don't want, and then stack decouplers, which will decouple things underneath the rocket. That's what we want. Now let's go ahead, click on the rocket, and place it back under there. Okay, what we used there was a Rockman brand, Rocco Max brand decoupler. And that'll decouple the capsule from the rocket so we can use the parachute and safely land. However, our staging has been messed up by doing these modifications. And the staging is here on the left. If you don't know what staging is, these are the stages that your rocket will go into. And I think, well, I'm not sure where it is for consoles, but on the PC it is spacebar to engage your next stage. What we want is for the rockets to fire first. However, the rockets are in stage zero. Zero is the last stage you'll ever do. So the numbers count up on the stages. Okay, what we want to do is find out where the decoupler is represented by two of these two discs, click on the little plus sign, then drag your mouse over the rockets and drag all them down into stage two, which will be the first stage when you fire your rockets, when, when you press the space bar. Okay, so this is basically ready for us to fly. Let's not go too much into detail of all this staging stuff. Let's do that in the future, but let's now go fly the rocket. Okay, here on the launch pad, you've got all these amazing and complicated controls. They're not really complicated. They're easy to get intuitive to get used to. Just a couple of things you need to know. Okay, let's start off with the staging as we did. If we hover over the staging, we'll highlight the part that it's gonna stage. So at least you know that you've got your staging correct. Sometimes you can go to the launch pad, you find out your staging is wrong, but you can correct your staging on the launch pad just in case you missed it in the vehicle assembly building when you were building it. Okay, what we have down here on the bottom end here is the controls. If I use the WASD keys, which are the keyboard controls, you can see I'm controlling your and pitch. That'll move the rocket up, down, left and right. But you've also got the roll, which is Q and E. That's handy, especially for when you want to rotate your craft for some reason or other. <laughs> Normally for docking, I <laughs> find out doing that. Okay, the center here. Oh yes, I almost forgot. You've got buttons here. Staging mode, that'll allow you to use stages. Docking mode, this will allow you to use docking, but 
and change the control slightly. And then you have map here. This will bring up the map, show you where your capsule is at at the moment. And you can view other objects like that asteroid we are tracking. But you normally use this mode. Say if you want to get into orbit, you'd use this to find your orbit. We won't go too much into the map at the moment. Let's click on the map view again and click ourselves back to the staging view, ready for flight. In the center here, you have the nav ball. This is what you'll mainly use to control when you're getting into an orbit or looking for a target. The only time you'll use the camera for flying is if you want, say, like you want to fly on land on top of the vehicle assembly building, which we'll give a go in a moment. Right, you have two parts of the nav ball. You have the blue here, which is, means that the the rocket is pointing at the sky and you have the orange which means you're pointing at the ground this center point here will always stay fixed in place uh, but will show you which direction you are pointing on that ball and by the way when you're pointing up north and south are swapped around don't worry about that it's just a fact of life <laughs> i tried to rack my head around it before but it's not worth it it's just because you're sitting inside the cockpit looking upwards Right, on the left here, you have throttle. I'm using shift and control to control that. Let's put it back to 50%. On the left here, you have the G-force. We don't have to worry about this so far in sandbox mode, but it's handy to note how much G-forces you're exerting in your craft. Right, till up here, you have your RCS control. R switches it on and off, or you can click it. Then the SAS control, which is T. This is handy. This will allow you chip. It's sort of like an autopilot. You click that on and it'll make you sh sure that your rocket goes straight as long as it's got proper control. Now on the left you have the Kerbals. Okay, you can EVA your Kerbals. You can set your view, your point of view of your Kerbal. You can do there, look inside the capsule. Press C to get out of that view. You can EVA your Kerbal, which brings him out of the cockpit. You've got these fancy controls in space to let go, F to climb out, or B to board. Let's board him because we want to launch the rocket. And you've also got this little thing here, interior overlay. This allows you to see your curbals from outside your craft, which is cool. I reckon that is awesome. Now on the top right, you have information. These are messages which you normally have in uh, career mode, I suppose, maybe science mode as well. Here you have all your fuel, electric charge, moral propellant, as you see when I'm hovering over them, they appear on the craft down below to just to show you where they are. And then you have this, which is probably much more handy than watching all the tutorials. Now if you click on that, you see, it gives you a KSpedia. Now you can use this to have a look in more depth at the controls, like the nav ball, what all these symbols mean, prograde, retrograde, which you'll want to note, that prograde is the direction of traveling, retrograde is the opposite direction of traveling, just in case you want to point at one of those directions. And you have a load of things on here which you can learn, like staging stack. This is, re this is really handy. I'm not gonna go through it, I'll let you guys go through it with your own le at your own leisure. And you have the last thing here which is Kerbal Engine Redux. This is a mod. I will show you how to install mods in the future, but this is handy for things like showing your stats of your vessel, delta V, your mass. But let's ignore that for now. Okay, the top here, you have the abort action, but you need to assign something to that action. You have your height indicator, your atmosphere indicator, which shows you so like the thickest part of the atmosphere, thinner, thinner, space. That's how you read it from left to right. And then you have your speed, vertical speed indicator. Pointing up means you're going up very fast. Pointing down means you're going down very fast and you should be worrying. Oh yeah, and these toggle lights, toggle your gear. And then toggle your brakes. That's normally for wheels or air brakes. And I think that's about it, other than the speed indicator. We won't worry about the heading at the moment. Let's go that into the future. Leave that for the future and let's go ahead and fly. Right, as I said, the camera does not represent 
the navel or your controls. Your navel always represents your direction of your controls. Now let's switch on SES so we lock the direction that's pointing. Now when you touch the controls, you can move left. And as long as you got SES on and you let go of the controls, it'll try to keep pointing that direction. Right, let's make sure the thrust is 50%. And let's go ahead and do this. Right, I'm gonna go left, which means you want to head in that direction on the navel. And we want to head towards this vehicle assembly building and just fly overhead of it. Okay, let's hit the space bar, the rockets go, press G to bring the gear up, hit A or whatever you're doing to go left on the nav ball. Make sure that this marker doesn't go to the orange side, otherwise that means you're going to crash, eventually crash into the ground. Tip over a bit. You might need to use W and S keys to make you go straight on the line. And okay, we passed over there, let's go back and head this way. All right, you might have a bit of trouble, it might rotate a bit, but just use your keys going up, down, left, right until you're pointing in that direction. We wanna stay close to the vehicle assembly, but the curable space center, just because it makes it easier. If you want to, you can use Q and E to rotate your craft and try to make it the nav ball a bit easier to read. Oh, we're coming too close to the, per the orange. Uh, we're going towards the sea. Let's go back. And we should be running out of fuel now. Yep. Yeah. All right. Now that we've run out of fuel, let's use the staging again. So hit spacebar again to decouple the capsule. Hit spacebar again to engage the parachute. We can now turn off SES so we fall in the right direction. And these Kerbals will survive. But rather than put you through all this and watching this all this time fly into the ocean let's hit escape revert flight revert to launch because this is just a practice session this is just for fun this time let's see if we can parachute on top of the vehicle assembly building so again going left engage SES thrust is at 50% hit spacebar to launch practice using the camera at different angles as well hit the gear up Okay, we could just want to parachute on top of the vehicle assembly building. So let's go left and space bar, space bar. Oh. Okay, we overshot it because the rocket pushed us in that direction. Let's try that again. Revert flight to launch. This is all for fun. This is just to get you used to the controls. So, so practice round. Perhaps if you want to go, so uh, let's try on top of the space plane hangar. Okay, that's, now we need to work out what angle that is. Now, that's going, pointing this direction at the 270 mark there. And it's not 45 degrees, 45 degrees be there. So it's about half of the 45 degrees. So in the middle of this triangle here. So let's go ahead and try that. So this time you need to go left and up a bit. So using the S key. Just experiment with the controls, so let's go ahead, launch, and quickly point in that direction. Oh, no, okay, downwards. We need to go downwards. We missed it. As I said, north and south are opposite. Okay, hit X to kill the velocity. Hit space bar twice, and your parachute should open. Will we land on the vehicle assembly building? <sighs> oh, come on, I'm gonna use the period at the stop, full stop key to fast forward time. Use the point period key then to slow down time. That's called time accelerate, by the way. And we have landed. A bit of an explosion, but we have landed on the vehicle assembly building. That is cool. Again, you can revert to launch and try your hand at something else. Perhaps land on the helipad. When you get better at this, which I have to admit, I'm not good at spot landing you can eventually use your rockets and come down safely on the vehicle assembly ball this rocket is a bit harder at the moment to try to do this you can oh we missed it <laughs> oh dear oh we killed all the astronauts or kernel nuts in the kernel space center <laughs> That's where the that's where the Kerbal Lords stay, and oops, a daisy. 
We hope they were evacuated in time. <laughs> Never mind. But again, you can revert flight, revert to launch, and they'll all be safe again. So go ahead, mess with the controls. You can go to the island off in the distance, which has a secret runway on it. Shh, I didn't tell you. Or this monolith over there. Shh, didn't tell you that either. Let's engage it, SES. That's heading route south, that is, uh, north. So down on the nav pole. I won't go and show you that. I'll let you guys experience that because they're Easter eggs and I think they should be experienced by yourselves. You can go, I suppose, watch people's videos and find out all about it. Let's use the full stop key again. Quickly land on the runway. Ah, that's the part that explodes. A little bit of the ladder is still on the on the capsule when we land. Let's extend antenna to transmit our successful mission to the Kerbal Space Center. Well, the dishes are over there. Must be a strong signal here. Anyway, guys, let's go ahead and do something a bit more complex. Once you get used to flying like that, the controls, the staging, the speed indicators, I didn't go much over that, I know, but that's something you're gonna have to get used to in the future. It's handy to use visual representation of if you're going down or up. So I'm going to leave all that in your hands and then I'll skip over towards launching into orbit. I'll meet you there. What we want to do now, go back to the launch pad and this time look for Kerbal X. This is a stock ship and it is perfect for the first rocket to get up into orbit. So let's go ahead and hit the launch button. Right now, we want to do something that's called a gravity turn. Again, we've got the same controls, same, a lot more staging to do. However, this time we've got boosters and they're staged in asparagus staging. So just follow me, follow me lead. Okay, first off, engage your SAS. This time hit Z to go full thrust. If you do or need to, kill your thrust instantly, hit the X key. So Z to full thrust, X to kill thrust. Or you can do fine control. Okay, but we want full thrust with this one. Okay, so first off, all the rockets will fire. Then next stage, we'll decouple the rocket, letting us go. Then once the first fuel tanks are empty, which will be indicated by here, or you can watch the rocket nozzles till they stop firing. Then you want to decouple these rockets. Now, where are they? Okay, it's going to be these ones which go first. Then the next stage, these boosters. Then the next stage, these boosters we decouple. And this is sort of like an asparagus staging. It just means that the foot will, when they decouple, the f center fuel tanks will still be full, making sure that we can get into orbit. Okay, so let's go ahead and launch this. You can play around with the staging if you want. But in three, two, one, launch. Decouple. And first, right off the bat, you want to turn right. This is called a gravity turn. You want to do a slow turn towards the right. Just make sure you stay in the center part. Okay, first rockets are gone, let's decouple. You want to stay as close as possible to this yellow marker which is called your prograde the direction which you're traveling and just slowly turn as i'm doing just tapping the key decouple those rockets when they're empty this is the bait this is what nasa do when they launch their rockets they turn slowly what you're trying to do is get up through the thickest part of the atmosphere first then you want to go sideways to get into orbit. Okay, next rocket, decouple. And they exploded right below there, hitting each other. Keep on hitting right. Okay, this time, let's let that go in this direction where we're on the 45 degree angle. Hit the M key to go to map view. And right click on this apoapsis. And what you want to do, you can also bring up the nav ball. Is wait until that comes up to 
perhaps a hundred kilometers or a hundred thousand meters which is a hundred kilometers that is when you're definitely going to space space actually starts at 70 kilometers okay get ready on the x key to kill your throttle hit the x key okay now what you can do is click on your add and maneuver node to create what you want to do in an orbit Okay, this is this will be in orbit as long as they're both over 70 me 70,000 meters you will be getting to orbit You can do that or you can do something a bit basic Click on here warp here. Oh Yes, I almost forgot because we're in the atmosphere. We're going phys We're going physics time accelerate. So let's cancel that using the period key and the full stop key then does the fast forward time. Let's go to about by here. Now that we've got the SAS on, hit prograde here. The rocket should slowly orientate itself towards the direction that is traveling. And then as we come in close, let's start throttling up. Now leave that going like that. Let's go to map view. Bring the apple up to help us control the rocket. And we can watch as this orbit slowly increases. The only problem with doing it this way, so if I come out of map view, this rocket will run out of fuel at some point and you can't stage when you're in map view, at least not in the last version of the game. Okay, wait until periapsis comes over 70 okay hit x if they're both over 70 kilometers that's perfect we're in orbit now we don't need that booster stage so let's hit the staging button decouple that stage hit the staging button again to engage the next rocket ready for us to deorbit now we can also turn off stability assist and i don't think we got rcs on this pr on this capsule but it doesn't matter you can now control your rocket to your heart's content. Let's go ahead and switch on the lights. Okay, it does get a bit dark when you go into the out of the sunlight, but that's okay. There is there are mods to increase the illumination and there are settings. In fact, let's have a quick look. Let's go to settings. Pixel light count, that's not it. Ambient light boost map editor. And I think this is just the game itself. Let's go ahead and turn it up. Apply. And there you go, accept. Resume flight. This is just to make it easier for me to show you what you're doing. You don't have to do this. Some people consider this cheating. But it's not really cheating. It's just making things visible. Okay. So let's go back to map view. And let's go up to the apoapsis. Let's warp here. By the way, you can hide all the user interface by pressing F2. And the F1 key will create screenshots. And you may be wondering, which is quite interesting to note, why that rocket has overtaken us. It was behind us. Well, the decoupler sent that into a lower orbit, and when you're in a lower orbit, you travel faster. And when you're in a higher orbit, you travel slower, because you don't need so much speed. And that's why that's overtaken us. If we were in a lower orbit, we'd overtake that rocket. Okay, this is cool. Now here you can practice your orbits. And what to do in your orbit. In fact, if we create an, a maneuver note, you can practice what, see what happens before you actually do them. Okay, go in prograde will increase your orbit and maybe make you go to the man, as we've got an intercept there, but we'll leave that till a later date. Let's go ahead, kill that. Add maneuver note again. Now, if we go to the triangles, 
that changes our inclination. And you see, changing our inclination also changes our height. That's because you're still thrusting forward whenever you do that. You can do a combination, like use the triangle to change your orbit. Say you want to go into polar orbit. Just mess around with it to get it right. That way you can orbit from north to south pole. But I have to note, doing something like this takes a lot more fuel. Now, when you create a maneuver node, you get this here. This is called your delta V that you require, the fuel that you require to change it. Now, if I open up this mod, because we may need it to help us, click on the engineer. We only have 2,203 meters per second, so we can't do this orbit. We need more fuel or more efficient rockets. But unfortunately, we can't do that because we're in space and we, we can't refuel this. So what you have to do is plan your maneuvers using the Delta V you have. Now this thing is called a mod. This is Kerbal Engineering Redux mod. It gives you all these handy facts, orbit, surface speeds, rendezvous with a celestial body or another craft. This is the one I use mostly is Vessel because it gives you a Delta V and it gives you your thrust to weight ratio. And you can mostly ignore the rest. However, they are useful. But your delta V, which is very important, is the speed that you can change. Okay, if we look at the orbit, it's showing that we're traveling 1,974 meters per second. We can make ourselves go 2,203 meters per second faster by increasing our orbit. So let's quickly try that out. Not actually do it, but show you on maneuver note. Now, if I travel 2,000 meters per second, say, a bit over, that'll make us leave the sphere of influence of Kerbin and into orbit around the sun, which is not what we want to do. So let's kill that. Also, last part on the maneuver note showing you what to do, or showing you what it does, is these weird circles. Now, obviously, that they change your orbit going up and down, away from or towards the planet. But you see, it's not exactly doing what you think it would do. You think if you were heading towards the planet, you would head straight down, but you don't. You have at an arc. And look, to get us down there, it'll take 742 meters per second. But an easy way to deorbit or get ourselves down is use the retrograde. Now if I do the same with that, head in roughly the same area, still it's gonna take 700, 700 meters per second, but if we do it where we did, we're going to do it, it takes a lot less fuel. And we're using a lot less, we're gonna have a lot less energy on our rocket. Because if I do it this way, You can see the orbit is coming up here. That's because we got a lot more energy that if we went through the planet, if that was possible, we'd come up with a higher altitude up here. And that means you've got further to fall and faster to fall, which sometimes can be bad. Anyway, let's try that. Let's try return. So let's use the maneuver. Note, head retrograde. This time, let's engage the SAS, we're using the Tiki. This time you have the maneuver node hit. So let's hit that. That'll point you in the right direction of the maneuver node. Now these little two numbers down here, which I haven't mentioned yet. Estimated burn time, 13 seconds. That's how long you want to burn at full thrust for. And maneuver node is the time until we get to the maneuver node. Now, I'm gonna quickly say this. You want to burn half the time before and half the time after this maneuver node. So 13 seconds. It's about 6 seconds, so let's quickly go full thrust. And if you watch the maneuver node, or the actual orbit, you see we're decreasing it. Okay. 
Okay, we missed the actual burn because the actual burn time was a lot longer than we thought it was going to be. Sometimes Kerbal Space Program miscalculates this. However, you do have tools in Kerbal Engine Redux to get much more accurate reading. Okay, throttle down slowly. Let's get this accurate. And there you go. Perfect. Kill that maneuver note. Go to the spacecraft. Now, when you're coming from the orbit of a planet, you do want to head retrograde. So hit that key. We don't want to enter the atmosphere with anything that will explode because re-entry heating effect does affect your rocket and it can cause parts to explode. And because these parts may explode, we're going to decouple. And the reason for that is because and here you have an extra part called a heat shield and it's got an ablator on it. Now the ablator will burn off but it will slow your rocket down so that your Kerbals can enter the atmosphere safely. Okay, let's use the fast forward time function. You can you click on there or use the full stop appear key. As soon as you hit the atmosphere, you'll come out with time acceleration. But you can use physics time accelerate. So let's quickly do that because otherwise this takes a lot longer. And let's get rid of the engineer because we don't need it anymore. Okay, now what you want to do is wait until your parachute comes from red and showing safe for you to deploy. You can right click on the parachute and you should say when deploy mode when safe. You can change when risky, immediate. But as long as that's not red, that means it's safe. So let's go ahead, deploy shoot. And fast forward time. Oh! Parachute was destroyed by aerodynamic forces and heating. Okay, I did not realize that. Sometimes that was probably from me time accelerating as we were coming down as the parachute was opening up. So you do have some of these weird things that happen in the game when you're doing physics time acceleration. So do bear that in mind. That was a freak. I was meant to actually land there. Anyway, let's go ahead, hit the escape key. This will bring up the log and show you what happened. Heat shield glided with the surface. Parachute collided with the surface. Parachute Parachute destroyed by aero forces and heat. <laughs> now at this point you can revert to launch. And let's quickly do that. There's one last thing which I should have sold you right from the start. Now I can hit the F5 key or the quick save key or quick save. And then when I hit F9 key or the quick load key, hold it down. It'll quickly load the rocket where it was. Now let's quickly launch this. Go for thrust. Engage SAS. Hit F5 key. And hit the thrust down. Let's say we do a mistake. Accidentally stage all the rockets here while we're close to the launch pad. No, we will, we're gonna die. The parachute is broken and everything. You can hold down the F9 key. Revert to flight. And you'll be back where you were, thrusting up into orbit and can continue with the launch. So your F5 and F9 key are handy. But what if you want to make multiple saves? You want to save while launching, you want to save while you're in orbit. What you can do is hit, hold on the Alt key, press F5. You can name your save now. So let's call this launch. And if I hold down Alt and press F9, it gives you all these. Now persistent is what is exact, what is happening in your universe. Everything that's launched, everything as it is right now, as the game is paused. Launch is the one we've created just before now. And quick save is the one that we quick saved just before we done the launch save. Quick save and persistent will always be there. You can always delete the launch save. You can never delete 
the persistent, but you can delete the quick save. So do bear that in mind. Let's quickly load the launch where we were. And it'll continue from where we left off. Okay, those are the handy tools. Those are the basic flights, controls. I will go into more detail on what you can do to get gain more control of your aircraft or your rockets while you get into orbit. Bearing in mind that I'm terrible at aircrafts. So go ahead, just play with this. Just have fun and, I don't know. <laughs> Send your Kerbals on missions. Perhaps you could challenge yourself. Perhaps you can go to the runway which is hidden here on this little island or just launch and try to get close to the vehicle assembly building now landing is quite hard so we'll get into that in a later date however you do have parachutes so you can attempt a landing with a parachute right let's quickly time it sorry turn off SAS What we're aiming for, the parachute will fully open if I right click on it at a thousand meters. So let's slow down time accelerate when we get to a thousand meters here. Bit more, and the parachute will open and we'll come down safely. <laughs> okay, so that is it for the first tutorial. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you want to really learn in the next tutorial because these are just very basics for newbies. And maybe a quick brush up for you if you've already played this game. And the heat shield just exploded. Awesome. <laughs> anyway, I'm Orbiter. Trust me, I'm an engineer. And I will see you in the next tutorial.